welcome from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Ventura, California. Today we offer an online worship service for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. You won't need a bulletin, just follow along with the service on the screen. The words in bold are the ones we'll all say together. The service begins with hymn 401, The God of Abraham Praise. We invite you to join us in singing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze, they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response appointed for today is from Psalm 26. We will read it responsively, whole verse by whole verse. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. 
If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. But do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem to undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death, before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of our mouths, the signs from our hands, and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
I was reminded this week of something that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King once said. Last Friday was the 57th anniversary of his I Have a Dream speech, so I went and watched it again. Standing there in front of the Lincoln Memorial to a huge crowd of people, he said, in part, I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. He continued, this is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we'll be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. These are such beautiful and inspiring words. I particularly love the phrase, with this faith, we'll be able to hew out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. I don't know about you, but a mountain of despair is what I see in the news this week. Too many people are sick. The number of deaths continues to rise, and to me, that's not just a number. Each one is a life cut short. A person with a family and friends who grieve their loss. I think of all the blessings that would have come to us through them if they had continued on this earthly journey with us. And my heart is broken. Then you add to it all the pain, the violence, the disrespect, the political twisting and turning to get our attention, the civil rights movement of our own day, fires, storms, and hurricanes, and it becomes completely overwhelming. In today's service, I'd like to talk about mountains of despair, because that's a term that really resonates with me. We'll also explore this morning's scripture, and finally we'll seek the answer to this important question. What does it mean to heap burning coals upon our enemies? Let's start with the Reverend Dr. King's Mountain of Despair. He used it in reference to the civil rights movement of his time and the deep need for black lives to be recognized as being important and valuable. In 1963, it was expressed in his I Have a Dream speech. Today, we express the same deep need in a different way. Now it has taken the form of an affirmation, Black Lives Matter. And when we say that Black Lives Matter, we're recognizing that for a long, long time, they were treated as if they didn't. Jesus, I think, dealt with a mountain of despair as well. His people were oppressed, abused, and their land was occupied by Roman soldiers. What was the stone of hope that Jesus was able to hew out of that mountain of despair? Well, for one thing, let's consider Peter, who he referred to as the rock. Last week, we heard Jesus declare, on this rock, I will build my church. This week, we're reminded that Peter is just as sinful, flawed, and human as everybody else. When he acted, Jesus said, you're a stumbling block. Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And yet still, Peter is the rock upon which Jesus established the church. The mountain of despair that was Peter was hewn into a stone of hope for the entire church. And like Peter, we're all human. And sometimes, I'm sure, our actions are pleasing to the Lord. Our faith is pure and strong. And at other times, well, though we may try to be our best selves, we aren't always successful. Life is difficult and filled with challenges. Sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we don't know which way to go. What is it that the Lord expects from us? And how exactly can we go about being the good Christians that we really want to be? I find the answer to that question in our epistle lesson this morning. Though it's referred to by some as a disjointed collection of sayings, I see it as a job description for Christians. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast that which is good. 
Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Continue the needs of the saints. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals upon their heads. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These are good and helpful words for us today. But what about that bit about heaping burning coals on the heads of our enemies? What does that mean? The answer is, we don't know for sure. But it's almost universally agreed that it is an idiom. It's a saying like, um, like it's raining cats and dogs. It's not meant to be taken literally. So we look to the culture the culture in which Jesus lived, and we ask what it might have meant to the people who first used this phrase, who was Paul talking to? And in their culture, what did it mean? Burning coals are found in the hearth. They kept the home fires burning at all times so they could have heat, so they could cook food and enjoy the light. If your fire went out, you'd go to a neighbor and ask for some burning coals you might carry in a special container on your head and take it home to restart your family fire. Our author Anne Robinson explains that there are commentators from the early church all the way to the Protestant reformers right through to today's scholars who differ in their interpretations of the idiom and whose interpretations break down into a number of categories. Category one, it's a good thing. Hey, Thanks for the coals to keep my fire in my hearth going. Two, it's a mean thing. Well, now I feel like scum for being an enemy when you've been kind to me. And now I hate you even more for making me feel bad. Three, it's a clever means of protecting yourself. Someone carrying burning coals on their head can't haul off and punch you without endangering themselves. Four. It's a cleansing fire. My wickedness is burned away by your kindness and I will no longer be enemy to you. And five, it's a fire of love. I deserve the treatment of an enemy, but you have given me the treatment of a friend. Your loving action has changed my mind about you and now we can be reconciled. So if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, be the kind of person who would help anyone, even your enemy, and send them off with the coals that they need to take care of their family, no matter what they might have done to you in the past. This is a beautiful thing. And pleasing in the eyes of God. Combine this with the lesson found in our gospel today, which tells us to set our minds not on worldly things, but on things divine. And what about those mountains of, of despair that we sometimes encounter? Through faith, we are to hew them into stones of hope. What a wonderful image and challenge to us all. No matter what the mountains of despair that we encounter may be made of, whether they are shaped by inequality or oppression or injustice, natural disaster or war, famine, flood, even pandemic, we are to set our minds not on worldly things, but on divine things. 
We are to hew out of these mountains stones of hope and perhaps even burning coals so that we can share them with our enemies and be reconciled with everyone in the world until it's clear that we are all one big, loving family of God. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley will be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. God bless us all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, John and Diane, our bishops, for Dick, Liz, and Susan, our clergy, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love as you send us out to serve your people in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of justice, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God of justice, hear our prayers for the world. God of all creation, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of all creation, hear our prayers for the earth. God of abundance, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and small businesses, for our neighborhoods and workplaces as they are affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Give us courage and strength and sustain us through these challenging times. God of abundance, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble for all of us as we face the physical, social, and financial challenges of the coronavirus pandemic, for those who are sick, those who are helping and healing, and those who are working to find a cure. We pray also for refugees and prisoners, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, 
for all held down by prejudice or injustice. God of mercy. Hear our prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please wave to one another or post a comment as a sign of your love, your wish that we all be blessed with God's peace, which is beyond understanding, until we can be together again. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace to you. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Hello and welcome. I'm Reverend Susan Beck. I'm the rector here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this morning's service. Whether you're a regular member of the congregation or just newly found us on YouTube or Facebook, we're very glad that you're here. We want to let you know that we appreciate your taking the time to be with us and joining us on this wonderful journey of faith. Thank you for joining us. So we have some wonderful announcements for you this week, and they're all listed in your email newsletter. If you don't receive the newsletter, please send us your uh, contact information so that we can get you on that list. And when you do, you'll find out all kinds of wonderful things like coming up soon, open mic night on the 17th of September at 7 p.m. Join us on Zoom for a wonderful evening of musical entertainment by members of our music department. You're not going to want to miss that. We have a wonderful um, a book club. We have a new group of pen pals. There's going to be a homecoming service, which will be on September 19th, followed by a diocesan-wide church service on Sunday the 20th. Our bishop will preach to us and speak to all of the Episcopalians throughout the greater Los Angeles area. That'll be ex exciting to see. We also have a reopening committee. We've been closed and out of our church for so long, um, but the committee will meet, uh, not that we can reopen yet because we can't, but um, soon, maybe, it's possible, we'll talk about an update on what the diocesan regulations are, what's been going on statewide and in our own county as well. That's gonna be on the 9th of September at 6.30 p.m. and everyone is welcome. 
Also, uh, one more announcement, and that is tonight we have a very special service planned for you. It's a service of Compline, which is bedtime prayers. And these are bedtime prayers, especially for children and families. And though it's created particularly for children and families, it's also just wonderful for anybody who's got a childlike heart. So if you are available, we'd love for you to join us on Zoom tonight at 7 p.m. for this wonderful service of prayers. The whole service takes between 20 and 30 minutes, and it's a wonderful way to quiet our minds and still our bodies, lift our prayers, and close our day. So you're certainly invited to come and join us. And now let's look at the blessings we've had requested for this week. We're very excited because our good friend Parker turned five years old last week. And so we want to offer a birthday blessing for him. If you take out your Book of Common Prayer, you'll find on page 830, Prayer 51. Let's pray Prayer 51 for Parker's birthday. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he fall. And his, in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon Parker and remain with him this day and forevermore. Amen. We also have a couple of friends that have died, and so we wanted to make sure to mention and pray for them. This week, Jim Parker's brother-in-law, Jim, passed away. We ask for you to hold him and his wife, Susan, and all their family and friends in your prayers. Also, David Catrone passed away uh, on Monday. He's a former junior warden here at the church and a Franciscan missionary and ask for you to keep him and his family and friends in your prayers as well. Let us pray, both for David and for Jim. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servants, Jim and David, and grant them an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And may God bless those who mourn with a sense of peace and delight in the wonderful memories they have to share. Thank you. Hi, I'm Reverend Susan's daughter. And here at St. Paul's Ventura, we're learning ASL, American Sign Language. Why? Because all people are welcome here. Now, today we are going to be learning an animal sign. My daughter's favorite animal is a lion. And my daughter is very courageous. So we're going to say courageous lion. You ready? Okay. So to have courage, you're going to mount it all up in your, in your heart and you're going to bring it to you and you're going to pull it up and you're going to have courage and see how strong you look when you have courage and bravery. You're going to be brave. So you're going to have courage. And then lion is very simple. You just rake your mane but it's very important when i do that i always want to just and you can just see the expression of how wonderful it is to be a lion so i especially want to talk to the kids today i've got six children and they are courageous and i know that right now life is hard and you guys are going back to school and you're having to go face zoom just like my kids and so I remind them every day to go and be courageous like a lion. So this is our ASL Minute. And thank you for joining St. Paul's Ventura. 
let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give god thanks and praise god of all power ruler of the universe you are worthy of glory and praise glory to you forever and ever at your command all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. 
from the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with me memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water in the Spirit, now ask your blessing. Though we will not consecrate bread and wine until our congregation can be together again, we remember the way that Jesus celebrated the first Eucharist and give us the words of institution. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all the people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Leah, Rachel, Bilhah and Zilpah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to you for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Sanctify us, make us one body one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, you are known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in praying. Dearest Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist 
and we desire to offer you thanks and praise as we proclaim your resurrection. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot be together in our church today to receive the bread and wine made holy, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and help us to be mindful that, though we are separate from one another, you are always present and will never leave us. Bless each of us and our entire congregation, as well as all of our neighbors throughout the world. Fill us all with your light and nourish us with your word and spirit until we can be together again. Amen. with your peace you alone O Lord are holy come and fill our hearts with your peace Alleluia come and fill our hearts with your peace you alone O Lord are holy come and fill with your peace, hallelujah. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace, hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for gathering us together today, for nurturing us with word and music, with scripture and prayer. You have fed us and filled us with spiritual communion. Through these holy mysteries, you assure us that we are living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.